Hi everyone, quick video on um, Radio New Zealand International. Um, I was inclined to tweet them earlier because uh, I'd listened to their news bulletin on the hour, well, 10 hours UTC this morning, um, and their signal was literally booming in S9 plus 10, a very easy copy. So um, that and the fact that one of my YouTube channel subscri subscribers sort of wrote back to me and said, I agree they're one of the few remaining sort of quality um, broadcasters on shortwave and i think i agree with that i think they actually might be my favorite broadcaster um, i can sit and listen to them for all afternoon and um, and it's all interesting uh, obviously the fact that it's in english helps but um anyway i when i was searching through my um twitter uh account looking for sifting through who i follow i couldn't find rnzi and i knew that I was following them. What I did find was RNZ Pacific, which got me wondering. Um, I'm actually listening to them now, actually. In case you're wondering, that, that noise isn't being caused by, by my computer. I've already tested it, although I don't recommend putting a laptop directly on top of the radio. This is just for the purposes of this video. Um, so, yeah, so I couldn't find RNZI, but I found RNZ Pacific. And so I started looking, and as it so happens, um, RNZ Pacific is now what Radio New Zealand refer to as their shortwave service. Um, they changed the brand from RNZI to RNZ Pacific to basically more clearly refer reflect who they're broadcasting to, as is detailed in um, some history on um, uh, on one of their web pages, um, and it's also in line with their push to engage with domestic Pacifica audience in New Zealand. Um, but they do also say that for now the RNZI brand will continue to be maintained on air through their international service, but domestically it's now known as RNZ Pacific. So they refer to their shortwave transmissions as RNZ Pacific, but. They continue to talk about Radio New Zealand International. They do it at the top of the hour um, and after their news bulletin. So um, I wasn't aware of that. So this is actually, this took place five years ago. Um, but it, it certainly wasn't five years ago that they changed they changed their, their Twitter feed. Because um, I'm pretty sure when I started following them a couple of years ago, it was still RNZI. But, uh, so there you go. Radio New Zealand Pacific. They do broadcast to the Pacific, obviously. That's their target audience. Um... Um, but as they say themselves, the RNZ Pacific signal can sometimes be heard as far away as Japan, North America, the Middle East and Europe. Well, I can tell them that I can hear them in Oxford um, every afternoon if I'm listening. And even even though sometimes the signal's not brilliant, um, I can, they're always there, which is great. And that didn't used to be the case. It used to require a trip to the woods with a very, very long piece of wire to hear them well at all. So uh, it's good. Um, in fact, I can remember... They, they became such a rare catch <coughs> that um, I was actually in Rio Capim in northern Brazil and I copied them very well. And I can remember thinking, wow, I haven't actually heard you guys for a couple of years. Um, but that obviously was from uh, from South America. So uh, it's good that I, I, you can copy them um, uh, so easily now uh, in, in the UK. Um, they are a brilliant station um, uh, with really good content. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and anyway, so I tweeted them basically to tell them that they were booming in, um, that I'd copied their news bulletin, um, uh, that they were at S9 plus 10 dB peaking this morning, and to ask them to make sure they don't ever stop broadcasting on shortwave because, um, there's listeners around the world um, who appreciate their content, so uh, so that's all good. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Radio New Zealand International is at least known by themselves uh, internally as Radio New Zealand Pacific. Um, doesn't make any difference to me. I'll still be listening. Thanks for watching. Keep safe. Seventy three.